Welcome back to Operation Take Back Tommy's Garage. In the last video, I made these upper cabinets and we cleaned off this massive shelf that used to be sitting here that was just full of mainly junk. So make sure you go watch that video. I've got a free plan for these cabinets. I'll link that down below and also link the video down below. Today's mission is to build a lower cabinet that will fit directly under this the same width the left side will be a cabinet, the right side will be two sets of four drawers. So let me get you down here, show you what I'm dealing with. Come on. The spider population in this garage is just fertile. I mean, this guy already moved in after I cleaned up this corner. Hey, little buddy. Oh gosh, oh, 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 he's flipping out. I'm just one with nature. What I've got to do for this is cut out a notch for the stem wall and this sill plate, and then also cut out a smaller notch for the baseboard. And that's so we can push the cabinet all the way up against the wall and have something to screw it into so it'll be stable. Not everyone will need to cut out their base cabinet in order to fit up against the wall. So the plan just shows a solid 24 inch deep piece for the sides for the lower cabinet, and then you can cut it out as needed. So now I'm gonna measure and mark for the location of each one of these cutouts. And I'm gonna do that in the location where this board is gonna sit. So I need one for this side and then so on down the line. And I'm doing that because the garage floor may be sloped. The sill plate may be warped. It may be sitting higher in places than other places. And I wanna get the right measurement for the location for each board so it'll fit right. One thing I'm gonna account for is the leveling feet that I'm putting on the bottom of the cabinet. Now you don't have to do this because once you make this cutout, if you raise the cabinet, that cutout is still gonna have clearance. I just want mine to fit a little more precisely. So I'm gonna account for the minimum amount that this will raise the cabinet up off the ground. And that means I will drop my mark down by that amount. The toe kick is three inches by three inches, so I mark that and then cut it out with the jigsaw. There's a middle divider for each side of the cabinet and I recess the area where the cleats are gonna be attached. And I don't do that on the outside pieces so that that cleat doesn't show from the side. So just like I did on the upper cabinets, I'm gonna use this jig to drill the shelf pin holes. It's got this cleat on it. I can just register that against the front edge, so that'll be easy on the front. But on the back, I don't have a consistent edge to register the cleat on. So what I'm gonna have to do is use a square to draw a straight line, take this cleat off, and then put that in position right on the line as I slide it down. I also have to think about which side gets the holes. Now this is the middle divider, so this one's getting holes on both sides, but the outside pieces, I've gotta make sure that I drill the holes on their inside face. The bottom pieces are pretty straightforward. I just cut those out to the correct dimension and then drill some pocket holes. And then attaching it to the sides can get a little tricky, but I use some spacers and just make sure that everything is lined up when I drive the screws in. I also like to add a bead of glue to the edge, but that's not strictly necessary. Now it's time to cut out the cleats. And while I've got this up on the workbench, it'll make it a lot easier to attach them. I've got four total, one in the front, one here, one here, and one here, and they should all be the same length. And I'm gonna measure for that length down here at the bottom where I've put the bottom pieces, because this is the correct length that I need. I don't wanna measure up here because these could be too far out or too far in. Each cleat will have two pocket holes on each end that will screw into the sides, but in the middle, in these recesses that I cut out with the jigsaw, I'll screw directly down through the cleat into the divider. Depending on the feet that you buy, the screw may not fit under there, so you'll have to drill a hole like I did. I've got the cabinet in place, and it's looking pretty good. 
amazingly, it is pretty much level. The only thing I've got to change is this left cabinet is sitting just a little bit below the right cabinet. So I'll raise all four of its feet just a little bit until it's flush with the right cabinet and then it will be level. I'm gonna start with cutting out the doors for this left side cabinet. And to measure for this, what I did was mark the line an eighth inch down from the top and an eighth inch up from the bottom, and then a sixteenth from each of the sides. And then in the middle, I marked the middle point and then went a sixteenth out from that middle point. And that gives me the gap between the two doors. So now I can measure from each line to get the dimensions of the doors. Don't try to just cut the doors from the dimensions on the cut list because you may have been just a little bit off with the cabinet carcass and the door won't fit right. I'm using the same cup hinges that I used for the upper cabinets and to drill the holes for those, I'm using the same jig. I'll measure three inches from the bottom, three inches from the top and then we'll line up this zero mark with that mark. That's for the very tip and the center of the Forstner bit, and that's where we'll drill the hole. At this point, I had been out of the shop for about two weeks on vacation and then getting deathly ill. So it was good to be back in the shop and I moved straight into cutting out the pieces for the drawers. At this point, you're probably like me and you've got all kinds of scrap plywood laying around. So make sure you utilize all of that first. I'm using pocket screws on the front and back pieces to screw them into the sides. And then I make sure that I've got it clamped up square and then I put the bottom piece on and screw it down. You don't have to use three quarter inch plywood for the bottom, half inch is perfectly fine and actually the plan will reflect that. We'll talk about the placement of the drawer slides in the cabinet in just a minute, but first I want to attach this part to all of the drawers, and all I'm doing is measuring the halfway point on the height of the drawer, and then we'll put the middle of the slide right on that line and attach it with a few of the included screws. For these drawer fronts, I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the doors for the other cabinet and mark the reveal that I want around the sides. So I'm going with an eighth inch on the top and then sixteenth on the sides and then in between here is a total of an eighth inch between the two drawer fronts. I've got to be careful over here and get pretty exact because this is going to be the gap with the other cabinet and that cabinet door. Now I'm also going to do the same thing I did on the upper cabinets and the lower cabinets and make this one continuous piece, not just each side, but the entire cabinet. So I'll go and I'll cut out a piece that's a little bit wider and a little bit longer than this whole cabinet. And then we'll go in and cut it down for this one and this one and arrange them so it looks like a continuous piece. I don't want to attach the drawer fronts until I get the cabinets installed. So I'll start by adjusting the feet, getting everything level, and then I'll attach the cabinets together with three wood screws that are countersunk. And then we'll attach everything to the wall studs through the cleat in the back with washer head or pan head screws. To make installing the drawer fronts a lot easier, I need to go ahead and measure and drill the holes for the drawer handles. I 
I only need to do this process one time and then I can make a quick jig to drill the rest of the holes. The trick is to get the first one positioned correctly, then after that, I can use this 16th inch spacer and that will take away my vertical alignment because I can just set the next drawer front on top of that, make sure it's aligned horizontally and then attach it. So to properly get these bottom two in position, I'm gonna eyeball it a little bit because this floor is not level. I can't really use a spacer. I'm gonna eyeball it and then clamp it into place on both of these, make sure it's right. And then I might test the next one with our spacer and then we'll attach them from there. Earlier, we temporarily attached the drawer fronts with pocket screws, and now I come back and countersink two holes on the back side of each drawer to permanently attach it with wood screws. When you're fitting these drawer fronts, don't feel bad if they don't fit with the dimensions from the plans because it's a really difficult to get a good fit like that. I actually had to cut off about a quarter of an inch off of both of the top drawer fronts to make them flush with the door. It's not a big deal, you'll never notice it. And in keeping with tradition, I have made a mistake. My natural inclination is to rip these doors off the cabinet and make totally new ones, but this is fixable, so it's a good time to show you how to do that. I'm gonna start by putting wood filler in each hole and I know this is gonna shrink as it dries and I'm counting on that because I need a little bit of space at the top of each hole. Once that dries a little bit, I'll add glue on top of that and then add sawdust that came from sanding this plywood. After that dries, I'll sand a little bit and those holes will mostly fade away. The best part about this repair is that I sanded through the plywood a little bit, so. I took a break. Doesn't mean that the mistakes are gonna stop, but I was about to... Also, it's hot. Man, it's hot. Now we can move on to the last part, which is the top, and I've got to do this carefully because I cannot take any more mistakes. I'm gonna use solid wood. I've got a piece of ash here as trim around the plywood top, so I need to subtract an inch and a half from each one of the measurements from front to back and side to side. Then I can cut out the plywood top, and then we'll mill this piece down. All right, now that I've got the top in place, we can attach it with some pocket hole screws because they've got this little washer built into them. And I'm not gonna go crazy with this. I'm gonna put one on each side in the front and the back. I cut out the toe kick and sanded it down and now I need to do a little bit of edge banding before I do the final touches and put finish on and then put the hardware back on and this will be done. So the only parts that I'm gonna edge band are these parts that show all the time. So it's this edge of this cabinet door and then this edge, this one here and just the edge of the toe kick. After that, I'll get the toe kick installed. I've got a little bit of sanding to do to break some of the edges here and touch this up. Then I'll put two coats of water-based polyurethane, put the handles back on, and this will finally be done. It's hot out here. I am just sweating like...
Now that I've got these two finished, I think I'm gonna take a break and wait to finish out the miter saw station and my plan is to build two more of these on that end because to be frank, it's not gonna be cheap. Plywood is really expensive right now. I think I'm gonna wait, give it some time. So look for those on an upcoming video, but until then, lucky for you, I've got a free plan for both of these. You can build as many as you want. Link to those is down below. Watch one of these videos next and I'll see you over there. It's still hot. It's still just 